Okay. This project is about how to recover the geometric structure of a face from a single image. My name is Matan Sela, and this is a joint work with Elad Richardson, Roy Orell, and Ron Kimmel. So acquiring high detail facial structure requires large calibrated camera rigs. These systems are uh, highly uh, expensive. In this project, the challenge was to replace these uh, systems with a single image that could be selfie image. This problem has been researched for a while. <coughs> Better and Blantz proposed a, a three-dimensional morphable model of uh, faces known as 3DMM. However, this model is not robust to expression and does not capture fine facial details. Kemmelmacher, Schlieselmann et al. suggests to warp a template face according to texture and shading cues of the input image. However, this model handles only frontal faces with neutral expressions. To cope with pose and expression, Zhu et al. detects facial landmarks and fits 3DMM and a blend shape model to the extracted points. Still, fine details are not recovered. To overcome this limitation, we propose a course to find CNN-based approach. Our solution is composed of two networks, CourseNet and FineNet. The objective, of, the, object, the objective of CourseNet is to recover the cost geometric structure of a face, the expression, and the pose. The purpose of FineNet is to recover, to recover subtle structures such as wrinkles. Given a facial image, we propagate it through CourseNet to recover the 3DMM and expression representation as well as the pose. This network is iterative, so we apply it multiple times until convergence. Since the 3DMM does not capture uh, fine details, we generate depth image using fully differentiable rendering layer. We then take the input image along with the uh, coarse estimation of the depth map and put it into FineNet to produce high detailed depth map containing fine details. Now I will describe CourseNet. We will start with a short, short background about 3D morphable models. So Vetter and Blantz found that a linear combination of two or more 3D fa uh, faces with texture produces legitimate faces. Thus, we could represent 3D faces in a low-dimensional linear basis. So we constructed such a basis. We took a data set of textured 3D faces. We automatically computed non-rigid registration between all the faces in the database. This brings all the faces in the database to the same space where we could compute this basis. So we constructed a linear basis representing both the shape and the textures of faces. To train a convolutional, convolu convolutional neural network, we need large amount of 3D faces. Such a data set does not currently exist. Instead, we propose to generate synthetic facial images. So we randomly drawn facial shapes and, and texture from our model. We set random pose, lighting conditions, and background. And we created a large data set of synthetic facial images for which the geometric structure is known. As I mentioned earlier, CourseNet is iterative. In each iteration, we feed the input to, with feedback channels representing the current output of the network. The first feedback channel is a normal map representing the local structure of the face. The second feedback channel is a universal parameterization of the face which represents the global structure. Similar to other pose estimation techniques, we found that iterative framework performs better than a single pass network. 
Given a facial image, we place a frontalized average face at the center of it and crop it according uh, by its silhouette. We run the network multiple times until convergent. A naive approach to train net course net would be to minimize the MSE loss in the representation space. Instead, we propose to minimize a sum of Euclidean distances between corresponding vertices. This, this penalizes deviation between the reconstructed and ground truth geometry. The architecture of CourseNet was ResNet 20. Let's see some results. As you can see, the cost geometric structure of the face is recovered by CourseNet. It is robust to facial hair, glasses, expression, and pose. However, since the 3 dmm is relatively low dimensional, it cannot capture person-specific subtle structure. Therefore, to capture these details, we now change the representation to a depth map using a fully convolutional, a fully differentiable rendering layer which we're going to talk about next. To do that, we compute the position of each vertex uh, in the 3D space and project it onto the camera plane. Next, we compute the depth value of each pixel using barycentric interpolation. Finally, I will describe finite. Our synthetic images were drawn from a 3 dmm Thus, they does not include any person-specific fine details. Therefore, we take a different path. We train finite in a completely unsupervised approach with facial images in the wild. During the training phase, we evaluate the coarse geometric st structure using CourseNet. Based on the stru this structure, we estimate the lighting parameters and the albedo representation in the 3DMM texture space. To do this, we use a simple least square technique. The loss function of finite is, comp is composed of three different parts. The first part is motivated by an axiomatic image formation model. Based on the output depth image, the recovered lighting condition and the albedo render a facial image. The first component measures the discrepancy between the rendered image and the original one. Since we would like to recover only fine details, we enforce the output to stay close to the input depth image, and this, this is captured by the second component. The final component is driven by a geometric assumption on the smoothness of the recovered shape. The, archi the architecture of Finet is designed with a transfer learning approach. We took the VGG face network, which was trained to recognize faces, and we modified its connection to build a hyper-column architecture. Let's see re the results before and after the application of Finet. So this is before. Uh, after the reconstruction of Finet. The proposed solution is an interplay between a data-driven 3DMM model and an axiomatic shape from shading approach. Here's another uh, example with extreme facial hair. Here, the geometric structure of the glasses was reconstructed as part of the face. These are additional results under different pose and expression. We compared our approach to the template-based uh, approach and the 3DMM approach. Notice the detailed reconstruction under extreme expression of our method while the template-based method could not cope with large expression. Here again, the template-based approach could not open the mouth, 
while the model-based approach produces a smooth shape. Our method recovers both expression, the pose, and the detail in the image. We also computed the average and the 90% error of each method on two different data sets. We showed that our method gets the most accurate reconstruction. Here is the reconstruction result for different resolutions of finite. Notice that the higher resolution, the higher resolution, uh, the finer the details that are recovered. The take home is our conclusion of this uh, work was uh, that if you don't have enough data, synthesize it. And if you have data, but it doesn't have labels, use axiomatic physical model, like our image formation model. That's it. That's it. Here is a problem for our next approach, which will appear at ICCV 2017. Thank you for listening. Okay, and take care. Thanks for the speaker. Yeah. Any question? Yeah, we checked the tail tweet. Okay, no question there. So I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that question. Okay. okay maybe that. Let me in the. Yeah, here. Okay, the microphone here works. Okay. Hi, uh, Toby Sharp, Microsoft. Um, in your render layer, how are you choosing to deal with hidden surfaces, for example? Oh. Do you have a Z buffer? Okay, yeah, exactly. So actually, I didn't, I didn't mention it, but we compute the closest triangles for each pixel. So we have a Z, buff, Z buffer, essentially. We assume the, uh, fixed triangulation also. So it's oh, not differentiable with respect to the triangulation. So the, tri the topology is fixed? It's fixed. In, I mean, and what about the visibility? Are you differentiating through that as well? Uh, so, so in, in our, re in our uh, rendering layer, we compute for each pixel the closest triangle, and then we compute barycentric interpolation in this specific triangle. And this is fully differentiable. Yes, but obviously the closest triangle will also change with the parameters, so is that also being differentiated? Sorry, I didn't get it. OK, it's OK. We can take it offline. Thanks. OK, okay. sorry. Any question? Okay, I have one. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what's the uh, image size for input to your course network image size? Okay, so in the course network is uh, 200 by 200. 200 by 200. And in the fine network, I, show, I showed two different uh, versions. One was uh, 200 by 200, and one was 400 by 400. Okay, if uh, the input image less than size less than uh, yeah, 200 by 200, Okay, then could you okay recover more detail than the image itself? Uh, actually, I mean, we didn't test it for higher resolution than that. Okay. But uh, in our new <coughs> approach, we already use five twelve by five twelve, five hundred twelve. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No question. Uh, so my question is, uh, what's the difference from your fine detail recover from classical chevron shading? So do you have any comparison about your results with chevron shading method? Uh, yes. So one of the methods, well, the template-based uh, method I mentioned is, a shape from, is essentially compute an optical flow from a reference face to the uh, uh, texture of, uh, of, to a specific uh, given frontal face. And then they use a shading, shape from shading approach to recover the fine details. So essentially, we, com we compared ourselves against this. So it's a sh the template based is a shape from shading approach. Okay, got that. Yeah. Next one, quick one. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, how do you cope with occlusions or different complicated shading? Okay, uh, so to deal with occlusions, we have this uh, in the in the uh, course net. We have this uh, uh, universal parameterization. Uh, feedback loop. So this tells the networks to, uh, uh, it gives the, the net, each point on a face a specific color, or si specific signature. So this help, helps the networks to uh, 
to uh, discriminate between the left cheek and the right cheek. That's for so several occlusions, all right? But we didn't, we didn't, we could, one option would be to uh, generate synthetic images with occluded parts, for example. We didn't do it. How about different shading? Sorry? How about different shading scenarios? If you don't have a liberation object? Different, what? sorry? Shading. Shading? Yeah. So uh, if you don't oh, yeah. so have a liberation object. Shadows, if you have self shadows on the, on the face, it's something that could, could be ge generated by a ray tracer. Or the, different lighting and Yeah, so we, we could essentially, actually we generated the data set with a simple, simple uh, 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 render, uh, like phone render. But if we used ray, ray tracer, we could uh, synthesize images with uh, self uh, shadows as well. And then I, I guess that the network could handle that. But this is just a uh, demonstrating idea. Okay. okay, so we still have a last a quick question. Very quick. Uh, did you explore trying the second stage detail recovery with different initializations? Uh, it looks like maybe you could do the very simple linear model solve that would be very quick and then just use your deep network at the end. Yeah, we, we could do it. Uh, but because I said that the rendering layer is uh, differentiable, so we train it end to end eventually. Right. So we can we can back propagate gradient through the rendering layer and then change the weights of the course of course net by, by an, in an unsupervised manner. Yeah, I guess it'd be interesting to know how much that benefits the. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, the a, it's a good question, and we didn't test it. Okay, that's thanks, the speaker. <laughs>